Hi, it's Chatty Abby and my husband Jeremy, and today we're going to talk about how we met. So it all started when I met Abby's brother at a Bible study at the college that we were both going to. I was a PhD student, and he was actually an undergraduate at the same time, so that Bible study was one of the few opportunities we would have had to meet, which was kind of interesting. We became really close friends through that, and because we became so close, I was away from family because I was from Maryland, he was from California, and so he invited me to meet his family for Thanksgiving. Which I think it was really cool that he agreed to do that because not many people would. On my side, I'd been online dating for a couple of years, and I'm pretty sure I read every single person's profile in my area. I had run through like all the options and hadn't found anything and I turned to my family and started asking them to help like set me up on dates and Ivan recommended Jeremy and was like hey I'm gonna bring him home for Thanksgiving so you can meet him to see if you like you guys would hit it off because I think you guys really would and he uh, sent me a picture of Jeremy and like we talked about the whole thing and so I was prepared to meet him for Thanksgiving when he came. I was actually sort of in a relationship at the time. Now, Ivan didn't know that, and there's not really a way he could have known that because he had asked me about that relationship previously before he had planned to set Abby and I up, and I told him that we were broken up, which we were at the time, but since he had asked me, we had actually gotten back together. When he sort of figured that out, he was like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. He was pretty frustrated because he Ivan wasn't, a big fan of that relationship and he was bringing him home to meet me and found out that he was still in it that relationship when i knew they were coming i got really nervous and i usually at that point i wasn't terribly nervous for dates but i got super nervous and i just started like obsessively cleaning everything and i couldn't calm down so my mom was like well maybe talk to ivan about it so like i talked to ivan about it i was like i'm really nervous and he's like why i was like because I don't know, I'm really nervous to meet Jeremy. And he was like, no, there's no reason to be nervous to meet Jeremy. Let me tell you who Jeremy is. Jeremy really likes anything superheroes and Jeremy's like super nice to everybody and there's no reason to be concerned about anything with meeting Jeremy. And uh, that, that helped me calm down and feel a little bit better and like visualize him as like a real person instead of just a picture. Once we actually got to Ivan and Abby's parents' house. Because, because I was really close friends with Ivan, I made a point to intentionally form a pretty good relationship with all the family members. So I spent a lot of time playing chess with Ivan and Abby's brothers, and I spent time talking to their mom. I like came home knowing that he was gonna be there and I was all anxious and I was um, working, taking as a caregiver at that time. So I came home in like scrubs and like he was there playing chess with my brothers and I was like oh okay here he is and I could not get his attention for the life of me like he was like focused on his chess game so I sat down and said hey how's it going and they're like oh this is Abby and he's like hi back to the chess game you know <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like how was the trip good chess game I'm like okay <laughs> so then I went and changed you know and I was like okay well maybe after the chess game so I spent the whole day like trying to like start a conversation but I was getting one word answers and couldn't get his attention at all we went out by a bonfire at one point and I was like I knew that he like was really into movies so I was like oh what's your favorite movie and he was like I know and he pulled out his phone found a list of his favorite movies and read it to me and I was like okay I like some of those too you know like it didn't how else am I for, supposed to remember what my favorite movie is you know taste change from time to time you have to have quantitative metrics <laughs> well, I was just trying to start a conversation <laughs> and that was not like the easiest way to do that so it, it was rather difficult I wasn't getting anywhere I just kept striking out and then he we're in the living room and he gets a phone call and he like lights up and runs outside to take this phone call and I find out it's his girlfriend and he's like in a relationship and I was like what are we doing here <laughs> nobody told me this guys like seriously so at that point I was just like I don't want to think about this anymore I don't want to you know like no I'm not gonna like set myself up for failure like I don't want to even do this anymore and my family was falling in love with him they loved him so much and they kept pestering me about it all the time like we like Jeremy. We think you and Jeremy would be a great fit. You should definitely date Jeremy. And I'm like, Jeremy is not single. 
stop it. Like, I don't want to talk about it. And they're like, oh, well, we heard about her. We hate her. So it's fine. I'm like, it's not fine. <laughs> it's not going to be okay. <laughs> No, that's not how this works. Leave me alone. Like, like, I don't even want to think about it. So after that, we actually didn't see each other or were in contact with each other at all until about six months later. So it just so happened that Abby's brother, again, was going home for spring break. And Ivan's mom asked me to accompany him because he had just gone through some surgery. And she wanted somebody to sort of make sure he was all right as he was traveling from Southern California to Northern California. And... I didn't have any problem with it because I was my friend, so why not? And this time it wasn't, and it had, it didn't have anything to do with me. Jeremy was Ivan's closest friend at the like in that area, and with all of his pain and the surgery and drugs and the whole thing, drugs from the surgery, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, she was worried about his mental state with traveling and wanted somebody to like make sure he got there. It was really hard for her to have her kid having such intensive surgery so far away from her, but the um, medical care that he needed was in San Diego and you know, and she's in Northern California, so it was like a whole thing. So Jeremy came back. I did think about it a little bit, but I was trying not to think about it. He actually noticed me for the first time. Yeah, so the difference this time was between November and April, I had broken up with that girl for good. We were over, Wasn't I wasn't going back. There were no more lingering feelings there with I is not in a relationship. I actually did start to notice how attractive Abby was. <laughs> he is a very committed, like, single focused person. So he, like, it was completely different meeting him single than meeting him, like, in a relationship. So, but we didn't really know he was single until he was already back and had been at our house for a day or two. Because I think he came for a few days. I was like, so, a week or two. Yeah, it was a long time. Getting to know him seemed a lot easier all of a sudden. And I started like putting a little bit more effort in again. Cause at first I was like, I'm not even going to try to talk to this guy this time. Cause I'm not dealing with this again. Like <laughs> I had my hopes all up and then they were crushed. So I'm not doing that again. <laughs> uh, but I, ended up, you know, I got your phone number without you noticing. I was like texting him and then I was like, now he has my number. Maybe he'll text me. He didn't. Um, Why would I text if I didn't have a reason to text? <laughs> so, and then I was like, oh, when you were here in November, you wanted to go visit, you know, our, like the church that's here. He hadn't had a chance to go. And I was like, oh, now that you're here, I should definitely try to take you. So I kind of like made plans, like take him somewhere. Like I was kind of a little bit like, but I was trying not to be like too hopeful about it. What's that plan was sort of in place Ivan sort of took that opportunity since he knew I was single now to say, hey, what do you think about dating Abby? And I was like, well, I don't know. I never really thought about it. And he said, well, what's stopping you? And I said, well, you know, I don't really date white women. He's like, well, why not? And I was giving him an explanation as to why. And as I was explaining it, I was kind of like, yeah, I don't know if that's a good enough reason for me to just disqualify her without knowing her. So, you know what, I'll, I'll just think about it more. So I kind of just walked out of the house and just started thinking about it like, why do I not date white women? <laughs> <laughs> Can I logically explain why I don't? And, you know, I came to the conclusion, I don't know Abby, getting to know her won't hurt. She was pretty attractive. <laughs> <laughs> so Ivan was like, I think like he's single now why don't you and Jeremy like try going out on a date and I was like I don't know how to get him to go on a date I can't get him to do anything I can't even get this guy to text me so I don't know what to do about it Ivan I don't want to talk about it anymore and he was like with Jeremy you just tell him what to do and then he does it and I was like I'm not gonna tell him to go on a date with me and he's like I'll tell him to go on a date with you and I was like sure Ivan he's your friend go for it tell him to go on a date with me I don't care I'll go on a date with him if he wants to after you tell him. Whatever. I'm fine with that. He's like, oh, okay, great. It's a plan. And I'm like, great. And then he decides to do it right in front of me. I felt like it's kind of like, I, wouldn't it be obvious that you like do that in a private moment? So I'm sitting there and then Ivan goes, so Jeremy, I think you should date Abigail. And we're all in a living room together. So I got super embarrassed, super concerned with this conversation happening 
across the living room from me. My mom's house is not that big. And I just like wanted to run away. I could not believe this was happening to me. And he was just sitting right there. And I could tell Jeremy felt really uncomfortable too. Like with me just sitting there, like, why don't you date Abby? Like, what's he supposed to do? Like, just like process that with me sitting there. So I tried to like leave, but I didn't want to feel like I was like running away, but I didn't have anywhere to go because I didn't have like a bedroom or anything in my mom's house. I went to the farthest corner away from them that I could and like started like washing dishes because like I just like didn't know what to do. And uh, pretty soon Jeremy had left and gone outside and I kind of relaxed a little bit and I was like, oh, okay. Okay, so we ended up going to the church together and you know, as we're getting into Abby's car for us to just drive to the church, I just asked her like a simple question like, hey, you know, how long have you had this car? And she just starts telling me everything that happened in the last three years of her life because I guess it was connected to how she got the car somehow. I, I, I don't really remember, but it was entertaining and it okay. got it gave me a lot of information about her, which was really good. And so it was just us. And we got in the car and the question he asked, I heard it different than what he said. And I didn't stop talking the whole time about from one question. I found that so embarrassing. Like I could not believe I was doing that even in the moment and I couldn't make myself stop. I just <laughs> kept going. <laughs> he is like the best listener I've ever met. And I just like talk and on dates, especially like, especially if I'm trying to make a good impression, I want to keep the talking like 50, 50. So I'm like listening at least as much as I'm talking. You know, I try to like, I, that's what I attempt to do. And I'm usually pretty good at it. But at this, this time, I was so embarrassed when I got back and I was telling Carol, so everybody was like, how'd it go? And I was like, I don't know. I talked way too much. Like that's not appropriate on a date. So we'll see. <laughs> well, I'm not hopeful. So then he left and I didn't hear from him again. So I, yeah, there was no action following that. Well, there was action. What was I action? sent a single text saying, congratulations on buying your house. Yeah, and that was like, what, two weeks after? I thought it was longer than that. Maybe a month yeah, later? Yeah, probably about a month later. Yeah, so a <laughs> month after we hung out, yeah, he texts me. Congratulations on buying your house. That's a reasonable reason to text someone. Anything less is just frivolous. I was at work and I was like, Jeremy texted me. <laughs> he does know that he has my phone number. Yeah. There just wasn't a reason to text before. So then I carefully thought through everything I was going to say back. And I responded. Abby's rule is that when she responds to someone's text, she puts the, about the same amount of effort. So her text is going to be about the same length. But my rule is that I respond to every single question and address every point made in the other person's text. So, like thoroughly, like if thoroughly. you say, how are you? He thinks about how am I? And then tells you how he is. In detail. In detail, like way more detailed than he is in person when he's like texting. So I'm like at work and I text him back like, oh, thanks so much. I'm doing it. How are you? How was this thing that we talked about while you were here? Something like that. Like about similar to what he had sent to me. He doesn't respond for like an hour or something. So I was like, oh shoot, what did I do? Oh man. <laughs> and then an hour later I get like a novel and I was like, oh, he did text me back. Oh my gosh. Maybe they are right. Maybe he does like me. Then I'm like reading like this like very thorough detailed text message. And I was like, oh, and I like stop working. And I'm like, I'm not like teleworking. I'm like working in person. And I'm like trying to sneak, like trying to sneak a text mm -hmm. and it, but I'm like trying to respond to him. And I'm like, I couldn't write as much as he had written while at work. And I didn't want to like stop and not text him back because he never texts me. So I didn't want to mess it up. So I ended up just like not getting any work done that whole day. Yeah. Cause she would send me back a text and then I would send a text that was twice as long as the previous one. It just kept escalating. <laughs> but out of anybody I've ever texted, I enjoy texting him more than anybody because I felt like we were actually talking. We actually were getting places and stuff. It was it was actually like really fun, but it was really tiring. It was exhausting. It was it was a lot. And I think you felt the same way, right? Yeah. Because Jeremy also spent the whole day texting me and didn't get anything else done the whole day. So. 
even moving forward, we, we didn't text each other much just because it's too much work. <laughs> see, now you see why I don't text people. What was your plan for our relationship? Like, oh. at that point, what were you thinking? Well, I figured the next time I went to Reading, I would go on a date with you and then see how that went. And then if that went well, then the next time I went to Reading, then I would ask you to be my girlfriend. That's all the father had <laughs> planned. But basically, it was a five-year plan to, to see how the relationship went. Ivan kind of nudged this along a little bit. Yeah, so Ivan said, well, you're going to be at a research conference in San Francisco next month. It's not that far from Reading. Maybe one of my family members could drive you there. You should plan on going back to Reading sooner rather than later. Because he's like, when's the next time you're going to Reading? Oh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just figure the next time, whenever that happens. <laughs> Which it could have just never happened. So because I was going the next month, I had to buckle down and get serious. So I started calling up all the family members for advice. I was getting some answers, but I wasn't getting the answers I wanted. You know, I was asking for advice, you know, how should I ask Abby out on a date? And the first person was like, oh, I'm the worst person to give you that kind of advice. I, I, I don't know, I can't, I can't really help there. Well, do you know who might be able to give me advice? Oh, well, this person might be able to know. And then I call that person, they say, well, what you should do is you should ask her on a date. I was like, that was I, my mom. <laughs> I, I, I've gathered that, but how should I ask her? Just do it. Ask her on a date. I was like, uh, I don't think, feel like I'm getting anywhere. Do you have any suggestions for the date I should go on? And then she was really helpful with that. She helped me plan the date that we were going to go to a play because it was a play that was going to be playing that was related to something from her childhood. So she'd have a really emotional connection about that. And so I was like, okay, great. We got the time, got the date. All I need to do is call her up and ask her on a date. So that is exactly what I did. I called Abby up and I said, hello, Abigail. Would you like to go on a date on, what was I guess like April Saturday at 2 7th at 2 p.m. Saturday, April 7th at 2 p.m. I don't know if that's the actual date, but I know I would have that type of specificity. <laughs> and she was like, uh, sure. Great. Hung up. <laughs> because I didn't want to give her an opportunity to change her mind. So Ivan had like, like after we had texted, I was like, oh, Jeremy texted me, you know, and he, had, he told, said, told me about the house, like congratulations on the house and stuff, which he had found out from Ivan. And he was like, great. Okay. So what's going to happen next? And I was like, I don't know it's been a month and he texted me once like it's like moving really slow if this is moving like i don't know and ivan was like well there should be a plan and there should you know and i was like but there isn't one i don't know what to do about that like i don't think there's anything you can do and ivan was like oh i'll fix it and i was like okay and then he called me back okay i told him to take you out next month and i was like okay <laughs> like i felt like jeremy was just getting bullied into all of this like being bullied into dating me and it just wasn't like i was like ah if you want I, I don't know okay and then i find out that jeremy's like J ivan picked the date and told him how it was gonna happen and then mccariel's like oh you know jeremy called and my mom's like oh jeremy called i planned this date for you and she had like planned this whole play thing and at first i was a little concerned about that i'd never been on a first date to a play i thought that might be a little bit much but also he was like flying in to take me on a date. So it made sense, I guess, to do more than just like go to coffee. I don't know. I started getting really nervous. Like everybody's all involved in this whole thing. So I'm like, I've built up like all this tension about it. Like, oh my goodness, what if he doesn't like me and he spends all this money coming into town and takes me down this date? Like you guys are like interfering so much. I don't know if that's okay. And then he like, they're like, oh, he's going to call and ask you out today. We know. And I'm like, okay. So I wasn't too surprised when it was like, Jeremy's calling, you know, like on your phone. Cause otherwise I would have been shocked. <laughs> he had never called me before. Like there had been no texting, no leading up to it. There was just like, he's calling. And I was like, oh, it's happening. He's asking me on the date. Cause everybody told me that's what was happening. And I answered the phone. I was like, hello. And he was like, hi, this is Jeremy. You wanna go on this date? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> And, and so I came back to the living room where my sister was and we had been talking about him when he called and she was like what happened I was like yep he asked me on the date she was like 
that was fast. <laughs> I was like, it's probably the shortest phone call I've ever had in my whole life. So I did not know how I felt at that point. I was like, oh my goodness. I had so many feelings and I didn't know what they all were. And I knew he was coming and we were going to go on a date and it was all really intense and abrupt. All right, so how'd the date go for you? The date was amazing. Uh, I really enjoyed the play. I'd actually never seen Oliver Twist before. I really enjoyed spending time with Abby and uh, at the play they were selling flowers and I just felt prompted to buy her flowers, which is something I had never done before. Uh, the Some cast members went around with roses and Jeremy actually got out of his seat, ran out of the room to find an ATM to get a couple dollars out to buy me like a rose on our first date. So that was really sweet and really special. I really enjoyed it. I had a really good time. I was, uh, yeah, I'd been really nervous about it and I had to pick him up from an airport to go to, on a date together. And uh, I think we went out for like ice cream or something afterwards, mm -hmm. and yeah, we had a we had a grand old time. And I did text you after this date. I texted you saying this was the best date ever. You did? I, did. I don't remember that. I that's, remember. That's super cool. Um, you didn't know if I liked you. Not until I had arrived at this time. No. Yeah. Well, and, and I didn't know if he liked me either. I, I thought maybe Ivan was just like forcing him into the whole thing. So, but yeah, and then that night evening when we were back at my sister's house, uh, my whole family got super embarrassed because I kept wanting to get closer and closer to him and like cuddle and stuff. And then my whole family was just like, oh my gosh, Abigail, like you were being so embarrassing. You need to back off. But that's how I figured out she liked me. So it worked <laughs> out. <laughs> then you knew. Yeah, and I was trying to sell my car and that evening I had to go and I was trying to vacuum it out, vacuum everything in my car and like work on it and get it all clean for for the selling it the next day or something. And uh, he left everybody inside, they were, they were playing cards or something and he came out and like helped me with it and I thought that was really nice. So we had a good night and we hugged a really long time. Like he just wanted to like, just like do like the longest hug of my whole life, like ever. And I was like, okay. So I just kept thinking, I was like, what if he never decides to end the hug? <laughs> and I was kind of worried that maybe he wouldn't. And then he did. And I was like, okay, good night. Bye. So. Yeah. And we had talked a lot. And so at that point, I had realized that I knew everything I needed to know. And I was ready to marry her after that. After that hug. Yeah. Like later he told me, I was like, when we hugged, that's when I knew I wanted to marry you. I was like, oh, well. That's why it took so long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I picked him up the next morning and we went to a restaurant for breakfast and my parents met us there before I was gonna take drive in back to San Francisco, which is about a four or five hour drive. Um, and yeah, we, we all sat down and I just thought it was gonna be a fun like, oh, we're so glad to see you guys and I'm glad you guys like went on a date or, you know, I don't know what my parents were gonna do, but I wasn't, I didn't think too much about it. And we sat down in a booth and my mom was like, so Jeremy, what are your intentions? And I got so embarrassed. I was like, oh, I can't believe we're doing this right now. We went on one date. Like who goes on one date with somebody and has like their parents like all involved and knowing everything about it and asking people their intentions. That usually happens when you like bring a guy home to meet your family, right? Which would be like after you decided if you were in a relationship, things like that. I didn't know. I had no idea this was going to happen. Anyway. And so I just told him straight up. I plan on marrying your daughter. And they're like, and then Abby mom was like, uh, maybe I need to reframe the question. So I, based on your response, I guess what you're saying is at the point you are in life, you're dating for marriage. And I was just like, yeah, that sounds better than what I said. Let's go with that. He verbatim said that. <laughs> and I was, I was shocked because I didn't know at that point that hugging that time he had decided to get married. So she was, she was blindsided as well. She was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> the whole thing felt really awkward to me. I, I didn't even know. And they're like, Oh, so, you know, you guys are dating then? And we're like, and we're like, Oh, we haven't talked about it yet. I'm like, okay. <laughs> she didn't ask me what our intentions were. She asked me what my intentions were. <laughs> so she's like, Oh, Abby, you're okay with that? I'm like, this is the first I've heard of it. I don't know how to respond right now. I didn't say that, but that's how I was feeling. And it was kind of awkward. I felt like the whole thing was really awkward. He seemed totally fine though. He was chill. I was asked a question and I answered it. 
Nah. What's there to What's there to think about? Yeah. So we went and got in the car and we started driving. And he's like, "What kind of music do you like?" <laughs> and then we spent the <laughs> longest, most awkward car ride of my life. This would have been a great time to just like, "All right, I guess you want to marry me. Let's talk about that." You know, for like five hours in the car, right? Well, you didn't bring up that conversation. I, I wasn't going to. No, I did not bring it up because in my mind, he was supposed to bring it up. And I kind of, at this point, I wish I had just said something, but I was sure <laughs> that he needed to do it. And then we arrived in San Francisco. And then I couldn't talk at all because traffic in San Francisco is nuts and trying to park and everything is very stressful. So I focused on that, got him to his hotel for the conference. And then I was like, Honestly, I would have liked to just like pulled up to the entry, like, and then like turn around and come home. Cause like traffic was bad. It was going to get worse. Finding parking was miserable, but I was like, we haven't had the conversation yet. I can't just drop him off. I have to stick around and see if he asks me out. So I found parking. We paid for parking. I think he paid for it. We got out and I was like, well, maybe now. Nope. So I was like, well, I'll walk him to the hotel. So I walked him to the hotel. And then I'm like, I guess I'll go back to the car. And he's like, I'll walk with you. We get all the way to the car. Like you can see the car. I saw and I'm like, well, maybe I should just bring it up. <laughs> should I leave without talking? I'm like, I was sure if I waited long enough, he would say something. <laughs> and you were correct. At the exact moment you were about to get in the car, that's when I brought up. So, would you like to be my friend and girlfriend? Like the last, and I was so frustrated at this point. <laughs> I was so frustrated. I had waited so long, and I, because if he had asked when we first got in the car, I would have been like, "Yes, let's talk now. Let's talk details." But he'd made me wait so long that at this point I was so frustrated. I didn't even feel like saying yes. So I was like, well, what does that even mean to you? <laughs> like I just started grilling him instead of saying yes, because I was kind of mad. And then also because he had told my mom he was, he wanted to get married. And I didn't know if I said yes to being his girlfriend, that meant we were engaged. Like I didn't know where his head was at because we also hadn't talked about it the whole time. So that was very confusing to me so that you would just say that but then also not talk about it. I was like, I have no idea where your head's at. I need some more details. Once again, can't give her much time to say no. <laughs> well, and, and you also give another explanation when I tell people this story. I didn't want her to say no, and then us to be oh, stuck yeah. in a car together for three yeah, that's, hours. That's the real reason. <laughs> Less time to change your mind. Do you remember what you said? I don't even remember. It was basic. And later when I asked you about it, you were like, well, I wanted you to agree. So <laughs> <laughs> I made it like as simple as possible. And it was real simple. So then I was like, okay. So we'd like hold hands or something. And he was like, yeah, we could do that. Cause I think holding hands was even my idea. And I was like, okay, yeah, I could do that. And he got so happy. He was so <laughs> cute. He was all smiling and stuff. And then I didn't want to leave because he was also happy and he was now my boyfriend. And I didn't want to leave my boyfriend in San Francisco. I wanted to leave the super aggravating guy who didn't have a conversation <laughs> with me. But like all of that floated away now that we had this like really awkward, weird conversation and we were together. But I was like, oh, if we find better parking, we could like hang out for a little bit before I have to drive home by myself. And he was like, oh yeah, cool, let's do that. Hmm? So we hung out for a little, for an hour or two yep. before I drove back and we held hands. And then after that, we had more of the conversations that Abby was talking about in our last video. And that's when we decided to get married. Yeah. Everybody kept asking me like, right. So I get home. I'm like, yeah, okay. I have a boyfriend and, um, my family's like, Ivan, especially, are you going to marry him? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. Like, I, I have no idea. I don't feel like I know him yet. I don't know what even being in a relationship with him will be like. Like, I don't know if I want to marry somebody who texts me once a month. Like, I don't know. But as soon as we were boyfriend, girlfriend, and I was like, like, I called him on my way home. We talked even, we talked way more in depth and way deeper <laughs> apart from each other. We had like 
intense hours of phone calls, like just hashing everything out. And it was a couple days later and I just like, was like, yeah, okay, I'm in love with him. And I was like, wait, what? Cause he was like, he was away from me as well. So like, like he's like, oh, Abby doesn't even know if she likes him. Oh no. And then two days later, I'm like, oh, I'm in love with him. And I was like, what? That happened really bad. It's like, well, it was an intense few days. <laughs> like it was really intense. So yeah, that's how, that's how it happened. Moral of the story, find someone to tell you what to do so you can get married. <laughs> if you're like Jeremy, get a friend like Ivan, who has a sister like me, and then you'll be good. There you go. Thanks for watching, guys!